sex work is the oldest profession in the world. <gasps> You're gonna die. You're gonna die. It's never gonna be the same again. And like, <laughs> it was fine. I do get the real nitty gritty of like their souls. Hi, welcome to Positively Positive. If you're new here, my name's Sarah, and today my guest is the host of Stripper Stories podcast, and we are going to talk all about her work in the adult industry. We're going to talk about sexual health and how that ties into this work, and we're going to get to know Chloe a little better. I do have a few friends who work in this field, but we're not super close, and a few more friends who've dabbled, but have never really picked their brains, and Chloe does not hold back on stripper stories, so I'm really excited to talk to her. Let's talk about the sex industry, baby. Welcome, yeah. Chloe. Can you Thank tell you us- Thank you so much for having me. Can you tell us where you're from, your sexual orientation, and what you do for a living? Well, I am from uh, the UK, London um, specifically, and I am a sex worker. I guess I was a stripper pre-COVID, and I'm straight right now. I would say bisexual, but I'm with a man at the moment, so I'm like liking that quite a lot <laughs> and yeah and I I worked in a strip club pre-covid now during covid I work on cam online so that's a lot safer well you think it was a lot safer so that's okay and I'm kind of enjoying it sex industry has kind of taken a massive nosedive things have definitely changed a lot um you probably know from your friends as well um but yeah it's it's going it's still going strong Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yeah, I get that. I work in theater and my industry destroyed. And I saw on your website that you used to be a dom. Is that pre-COVID or you've just retired from that completely? Uh, yeah, I retired from it completely before Corona. Thank, I mean, I hate to say it, but thank God because like all of the, the houses and dungeons have closed in London now. I don't think they're gonna be re reopen at all. A lot of my friends who did it um, they're probably not going to go back to it. They have a lot of subs online. But other than that, yeah, that that's one thing that is quite difficult to do, like, without being hands-on. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, if you're a stripper or a dancer, I mean, we have that meter away rule where you can't touch anyway. So it's kind of okay. Even if we did have to do the mask thing, it might be a bit kinky. If you're a dom, dear, it just wouldn't work. So I think that that's kind of the industry. Ugh, it's going to be a bit difficult. But yeah, I, I, uh, I've retired my my whip and shackles quite quite early on it was it was cool i enjoyed it it wasn't i mean the money isn't there i i mean i like money that's why people work in the sex industry a lot of time it's a great way to be financially independent and i found that the yeah the kind of lifestyle and and the like pay wasn't as good as other things that you can do um and you do get I mean, there are quite a lot of different types of kink that I'm into, and there's quite a lot of different types of kink that I just, I'm not. So uh, I had to be a little bit more flexible with that. And at least on cam, it's it's a lot more, you know, less personal. So um, I love being a dom. I did love it, but it was for a long longevity's sake, I just decided mm, probably not, like for my mental state, probably not a good thing to just carry on doing, but I did like my time in it when it, when it happened, <laughs> yeah. So for the, obviously this doesn't come into play as much now when you're doing online work, but when you were doing live, a lot of my listeners have an SDI or they're dating someone with one, friends and family of someone with one. So I haven't held back on my own experiences. You don't hold back. So I want to ask, do you have any personal experiences with STIs? Yeah, I had chlamydia. I had a fucking <laughs> sneaky, mysterious chlamydia where no one knew where it came from. I was like, whoa, whoa, never had anything before. I found out on my birthday um it was it was a funny story um i think i was i think my, i remember my friend telling me the story and uh someone called me and and i think this guy had cheated on me or something and it was my birthday and i was like he's cheating on me and she was like oh my god that's so awful and i was like and i've got chlamydia she was like oh my god that's so awful but it's not awful it's not the end of the fucking world you take a tablet and it's absolutely fine but you know it's got this stigma around it um, I think it was one of those silent carriers as well. There's really annoying fucking people that you can never tell if you've got it or not. And then you end up having it fucking forever. So yeah, I had that and I've got HPV as well. I don't know whether it's the same in America or Canada. I just think that over here, you've got like this, the more serious strain and then you've got like the, the least, like lesser serious strain. I haven't had to have the scans every year or anything yet. But yeah, that was, that was a big one. I think everybody, 90% of people who have sex have HPV. So like it's yeah. not a fucking big deal, but still, 
like that's another thing when you start getting like little bumps and things on your like vagina and you're like oh, oh my god what is that um that has happened to me before and it's not it's not nice like especially when the new partner sometimes it flares up again doesn't it yeah i mean every girl i know on the planet has it like yeah. you know whether they know it or not and like your body just gets rid of it it comes back like it's just one of those things but yeah so that's the only two things i've ever really had to experience myself a lot of my friends have the herpes virus and i talk about that quite a lot a couple of my friends do have it that also has a massive stigma around it and it's always fucking the worst thing ever i remember being with one of my friends when, you, when she first discovered she had it and like it, the flare up the first time is the worst time everyone knows this so she, yeah. i didn't know this neither of us knew this and we were like oh, you're gonna die you're gonna die it's never gonna be the same again and like it was fine it was absolutely fine it's just a week of absolute agony and then after that now the flare-ups are just not as bad but yeah i do i do sympathize empathize and that was a mysterious that was mysterious too like what is it with people not knowing where these things come from nowadays? I mean, that's the thing that bo- that bothers me, I guess, the most. Not be able to trace it back yeah. to a person, you know? Because, yeah, people are just so secretive and not as honest as, you know, there's no shame in having an STI, you know? I think I, I think it was you on your Instagram earlier, you put, or yesterday, you're like, how many sexual partners does it take for you to have an STI? One, literally, yeah. it's one. So, yeah. yeah, guys, it's nothing to be ashamed of at all. So when you had chlamydia or even with HPV, did you have to, I mean, I assume you would have to stop working with the chlamydia for like a week or whatever, how long it takes to clear it. Or like, has that ever come up with clients or anything? Well, I've never been full service. So I've never been escort per se. So that's never really been an issue for me. Not because I have any judgment towards it at all. It's just because I'm, clearly quite thick and (laughs) I can't decompartmentalize my brain (laughs) at all when it comes to sex and work right it's like one of those things because it's important to me and my sexual relationship with people is important and I am that person that can't I wasn't able to go full service for myself but all my friends who do do it I'm like yes bow down to you like queen like I don't know how you do like it's just crazy to me but fantastic and so it's never really been an issue for my clients because I never had did any sexual acts, I guess. With partners though, um, HPV, I don't know. I've never really been like, cause you know when you just think, well, I don't know if this is the right thing to say, I'm just gonna say it anyway. Do you just say, oh, I've got HPV? Like everybody's got it. They probably got it. They're the ones that probably gave it to me again. Or like, even if your body gets rid of it, like you, you see the little like lumps come back up or like whatever. So are you just gonna say like, oh, every every time you, you feel like you've got a flare up or you don't or whatever, do you just say it? Like three or four times in the same relationship. Oh, the HPV is back. <laughs> that looming, looming fucking death and like death and dishonor thing. Like, no, I don't know. I don't think I've ever had to mention it to anyone really. But yeah, maybe I should have. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't if, know. if it was like herpes, maybe it'd be a different thing. I don't know why herpes for me would be a more uh, like a, more of a conversation. Um, probably because I don't know because it's one of those sexually transmitted diseases where or infections where it just if you don't have it, then you give it to someone else. It's almost like having um, the cold sores. Cold sores, yeah, yeah same that thing, is right? Herpes, yeah. That's herpes, but it's just the, obviously the different strain, right? Well, or is it the same strain? HSV1 and HSV2 can both be oral or genital. HSV1 is most commonly transmitted as a kid, like from a family member who has one, they kiss you or whatever. But what people don't realize right. is you can give someone genital herpes and lots of new genital herpes cases are HSV1 because of oral sex, but we're not educated that you can pass it that way. So, <laughs> yes, this is what I read with my friend. We're like, oh, okay, so so the person who gave it to the guy who then gave it to my friend, she could have just been sucking his dick. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating. And people, like, when they find out, they're like, what? Oh, my God. And that, the first person I told, because um, I was, wanted to sleep with him again, um, he like kind of freaked out, but then he told me that he gets cold sores. And I was like, well, you know that you can pass those to someone's channels. He's like, no, I can't, no, I can't. And I'm like, dude, you fucking can. Like you need, like, please fucking open yeah. your pool properly. Yeah. Uh, so for camming, I had a question cause I've done uh, bartending 
and I don't go to the hairdresser, but a lot of people tell me they're like best friends with their hairdressers. And I feel like being a cam girl is, a, you're in a position where people trust you. So do they ever like talk to you or dump on you or like tell you about their lives? Literally every day. Okay. Like, yeah, it is, it's one of those things. I'm actually, to be fair, it's, I'm not complaining. If a guy's talking about their day, the money is racking up every minute. I'm like, babe, just go on, carry on telling me about your wife. I do not mind. Like, it doesn't have to be just that sterile act, like turning on the camera, quick wank or quick whatever you're doing or quick, I don't know, kinky, kinky, sissy, sissy puppy play and then turning off the camera. It's nice to just have that kind of relationship with a person where they can be a regular and you know a bit about their life and what they're dealing with at home. Like, especially now in Corona, people are lonely. They wanna they wanna have a chat with you. And, um, and also it doesn't really help. I mean, it does really help the, the money. So if you just really slowly, especially if you're typing, I've taken to this new thing now where you're actually like speaking to someone, even though I could totally do that. It just takes a lot longer to type. So I'm like, just too, sorry, my, I just don't think my microphone's working. I'm just letting my, my secrets out. I'm just typing really slowly because then the money is just like, keeps going and they don't mind. And so you just pretend that you're a really bad typer. That's really cool. I'm actually really enjoying that. It saves my voice as well for podcasting and things like that. That's the funniest <laughs> yeah. thing I've ever heard. That's great. I know, it's mad, right? Oh, silly. So what is your favorite and your least favorite thing about camming? Favorite is I don't have to leave the house and you know, condoms do not protect against Corona, even though people they mm -hmm. say that they do. So, I mean, having anything sexual with a person via a camera, a lot safer. And so, yeah, that's quite good. I like, yeah, that would definitely be it. And I think that the fact that it's via camera is that people feel a lot more, um, a lot safer to just offload. And so I do get the real nitty gritty of like their souls. Like, I don't think people would really dump on me. <laughs> oh, that sounds really gross, <laughs> but really kinky. It wouldn't like dump shit on me in this strip club the same way because it's face to face. People get freaked out, even though I'm, I'm not here to buy anyone yet. Um, so that's a good one. And then a, a negative, I think, obviously at a strip club and if you're at work, you see other people and you get that kind of rapport, that kind of girl, tribe you get you miss your people like i miss my girlfriends that i used to work mm. with you miss like being around human beings the time when we could actually lick each other's faces which was really great now now literally we are so like far i guess removed from human contact that it is quite lonely so yeah i kind of i, I would i'm definitely gonna carry on camming that's one thing that's for certain i think that um the strip clubs aren't gonna open up i do but i do really miss the environment it was a fun place to work so yeah that's probably a negative side i think yeah that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. okay for stripping because i had a friend who like um was taking pole classes and stuff how long did it take you to get comfortable because that fucking upper body strength is insane like how long did you train before you were like no i got this um not that long, you know. I think I just, I learned on the job. I was one of those kind of like, those self-taught idiots that like, you know, the, all those guitarists are like, did you not go to a class? Like, no, actually, I just fucking swung around a few times and got my friend to give me a shot of tequila and be like, go on, up you go. So that's basically how it went. <laughs> I, um, you said you did theater. I, I trained in musical theater. So that's all I did is my master's degree. So I did a lot of ballet. Not that, that really would fucking have helped me, but I did have a bit of, I guess, style. I wasn't just absolutely too left feet, like at all. So I've done a lot of ballet. That's basically, and I was just slutty ballet around a pole. That's what I would just definitely call it in higher and better shoes. So yeah, I think that kind of helped me. I didn't really train that much. After I went and did quite a lot of shifts, I was like, why not, why not try do pole classes? But they're more like pole fitness. It's not really the same for working, jobbing strippers. It's not really the same kind of technique, I wouldn't say. Um, well, not in London anyway. The, the classes were kind of embarrassing. So I swiftly just did not go back. It's, not the, it's just not the same. I think you learn more from actual real girls on the job than you would in a class setting. So yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I have another one about camming. So I was listening to your episodes and you said one time you were on cam for four hours. And I was like, is that a long shift or a short shift? 
I'm assuming you make your own hours. Like how long on an average day of work are you on camera? Well, recently I've just taken to not doing like, well, I'm obviously rigid. So I start work at like nine, like any normal person. And I turn the camera off at about seven and all day. So I'm just, I have it on in the background when I'm doing other things like podcasting, housework, um, other jobs that I have. And then if someone calls me, I just like literally drop everything and just run, <laughs> just run to the camera wherever it's set up, which is like my little slot office, which is what I'm in now. So I'm on, I guess I'm working only for the time that I'm actually getting called, I guess. Um, lots of girls sit there and they advertise on the first page, which is like the pages of, of uh, cam girls, I guess, that are online. And they'll stay online in free chat, basically being able to be seen by men for hours. That's something I just don't do. I don't do free chat. If someone wants to call me, they'll see my profile and then they'll call me and that's when I start work. Um, it's a lot better for my mental health and yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of like people who actually call me want to talk to me then. It's not just like someone just flicking through a page and wanting to see free anything for free. People just get the wrong idea then. Not slamming any girls who do do that because that, if that's the way you make your money, fine. I'm just like a bit more relaxed about it. It's kind of like the universe, you know, I'm just like, I don't really want to really, really hustle online. It's just too fucking difficult, especially when there's there's thousands of girls doing it at the, at the moment, like women who've done other things, people who are working in offices before Corona now have turned to camming. It's overly saturated. So I'm just like, you know, just chill, just try and chill. <laughs> this fucking state of the world right now is just stressful enough. There's, you don't need one more cam girl freaking out about money. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, so that's kind of how I work now. Before I used to do rigid two hours, sit there, stare at a screen, but not anymore. It just doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. It sounds mm -hmm. like you sound so chill about like your process and your hours and everything. It's reminding me of the friend that I knew. Um, she worked, I don't even know what you call it, but it was a, a full service spa. And she like her whole personality changed after she started working there and like her personal relationships sort of went down the drain. So it's so nice to hear you be like, no, yeah, these are my boundaries and this is what I do and this is what I don't do and my relationships are awesome. I just think it's a good perspective for people to hear. Like, you don't have to do anything you don't want. It's literally a job where you fucking make your own hours and do whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. I think I, it's, it's bad that like the sex industry gets a bad rep, I guess, because of obviously there are people who've had really tough times and like really difficult situations happen to them or they haven't you know they haven't wanted to do it in the first place so they've been coerced into doing it They're like obviously that does happen and i'm not gonna say it doesn't however it's not like across the board you know not every yeah. stockbroker is a complete cocaine sniffing asshole mm -hmm. you know or do you know what i mean like it, not everybody is the same so i feel like painting everybody with the same brush from like the girls the guys people in the gay community the trans community like that eye rolling, that slow eye roll movement that we all talk about when someone says, why is a person like you in a place like this? Why would you choose to do this job? Can I not save you from your destitute? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, hon, I walked here to the strip club, not in shackles, in my Porsche, actually, which you pay for. So thank you. No, it sounds really horrible and like really up my own ass, but people do really need to understand that this is a job for a lot of people just to have financial and self-independence. And it does help a lot of people not just with money, but with like personal self growth. I mean, I see so many girls, especially girls, cause I work in a, in a straight uh, female strip club, right? So I can't really speak for anyone else, but they'll come in really shy, bow legged, Bambi, like, oh my God, the world's gonna eat me up. And then they, you know, with people walking all over them and then they'll leave the strip club years later with some confidence. And yeah, obviously some bad things come with that. You sometimes get a negative view on men, more negative view on men because you are seeing them in a different environment more highly sexualized environment but overall people and women do say that they do get a lot more for their money than just money in the strip club if you know what i mean so yeah. you know it did change me a lot and i think not just for the better i mean i, I think i'm a bit more of a well-rounded personally for myself what i would want to be a, a well-rounded woman that was hard to say well rounded woman oh, <laughs> doing my theatrical rah. it's really yeah. fucking difficult yeah so that was a big long tangent but there you go no <laughs> i love it so on that note what are your best tips for embracing sexuality in a shame-free way i think 
if it's not hurting anyone else, it's consensual and you enjoy it, then do it. If it's not going to, that's literally it. Like my three like rules or like my rule is if it's not hurting anyone else, then everyone else can butt out. If you and another person, no matter who or she or he or whatever is, just live your lives. People don't need to stick their noses in. You don't need to stick your noses into other people's business. I think that the biggest problem with like horophobia and any negative slaying, slating of the sex industry or what people who work within a highly sexualized industry is people, other people's opinion on it. It's never really the people who work in it's opinion. And I think then it just ends up being this absolute mess of rubbish when you talk about like the OnlyFans issue and like all those other things. Just like let the women, men live. Just fucking let them live. And if they want to show a nipple on Instagram, let them show a nipple on Instagram. Like, why is it that men can go topless and women can't? We could talk about this till I'm blue in the face. I don't understand it. Like, sex work is the oldest profession in the world. I don't understand now that in 2021, we're still really struggling with it. Just that like, just, you know, it was. <laughs> you saying the oldest profession in the world. So one of the first things I had like a very tiny acting role in was called the oldest profession in the world. And it was so yes. fun. And that just brought back my memories. I'm like, yeah, yeah. The yes. documentary. So what you were saying reminds me, Brene Brown, she's an American author and she studies human behavior and psychology and relationship patterns and stuff. And she says, I'm going to butcher this quote, but it's like, if you're not in the arena, I don't want your opinion. And what you're saying about criticism, it's like, it's from people who are outside that industry. And it's like, well, fuck off. Cause you're not in the arena. So I don't care about your opinion. I. But I did some polling on Instagram from the people. Are you up for some rapid fire questions? Yes, go for it. Okay, for, for camming and sex work, how do I get started in a small town with zero followers? Message me. <laughs> no, stripsforagepodcast.com. No, I'm kidding. I think that ask some women, like if you, you don't really, it doesn't really matter that you're in a small town. Um, cam is online so it literally reaches anywhere you want it to or don't want it to so if you want to like not be seen in your area you can be it's a really safe there's safe ways to do that so you don't have to worry about that i mean i started with a group online which they're kind of like a camming clan and you sign up and they they do your profile and everything for you i mean that's a great way to start if you have no idea what you're doing you can sign up to a cam group um, and they have them all all online. There's different cam sites that you can sign up for to just do some reading, ask some questions, um, listen to some podcasts. There's loads of sex podcasts out there with cam girls working now. Um, and they talk about how to get into it. I do an episode on it, like 50 plus a tip does episodes on it. Like loads of, of sex workers do podcasts, especially through COVID. So listen to some of them and get some ideas and Honestly, people will rally around you. It's not as, as scary as you think, and it would be easy. So yeah. Okay, another one for getting into it, but um, getting into stripping was this question. Was it an audition or did you know someone? Did you call? Do you send a resume? Like what the fuck do you do to get in the door? Just turn up, <laughs> literally. Knock on the door and walk in the door. Literally is how I did it. Really? I never sent a resume. Yeah, I mean, I think some clubs do ask you to send them, but. At the same time, it's more like you're selling yourself. How can like your actual physical self? Um, it's not really about having any prior experience as such. So if you go knock on the door and they see you and they see your ego and you're like into it, they're gonna invite you in. And a lot of the people that I auditioned for as well, they let you work the same night. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It would also very much help if you have friends in the same strip club, obviously they can show you the ropes and stuff. I never had that. I literally knew no one. I had no friends, nothing. I just walked straight into a strip club and was like, I want a job here, let's go. It was so awkward and embarrassing. Like my audition was absolutely horrendous. It was like something from Cabaret, Liza <laughs> Minnelli. No one wants to be seeing that shit, okay? <laughs> I literally started off like an absolute elephant on a strip a stripping pole, but um, it did change and things do change. So. Trust me, if you ever have any issues, just think about that. You know, I was absolutely horrendous and you probably will be too, but there's nothing wrong with that. And someone, everyone has to start somewhere. So yeah, I think just go for it, turn up. Can sex work be done anonymously like a little Hannah Montana moment? 
<laughs> uh, yes, it can. And I don't, well, uh, unless you're on cam, I mean, you're on cam, right? I don't use my real name anywhere. Um, you know my real name now because I'm on Zoom with you. And my mother always asks me why I've got my other name there when I'm Zooming her and I had to keep changing it back. It's fucking irritating. Thank you, mum. But other than that, my <laughs> my worker's name, my working name is Chloe. I've always used that. I even answer to it on the street now. And that's easy. However, if you're worried about being seen on camera, that's really difficult to not be seen. People do actually want to speak to your face. So that would be quite a, of a struggle. And then obviously in a strip club too. So you can always have your, your uh, stripper name, your dancer name, whatever you'd call it. That's probably the best way or wear a balaclava like me. <laughs> I've done that a few times. That's the only way really to stay anonymous, to be honest, because um, you are obviously working with people. So it's very difficult to like not have a face, but a name is easy to change. Yeah. That brings up a, a question that I have. Is there like settings? I don't even know how you prevent this, but like, can you make it so people can't like screen record a session with you or something? Or is that just something you're like, yeah, I accept that. And it's, it's part of it. If that happens. Yeah. Okay. So I always used to worry about this. This is why I was like, I'm never going to do cam because people could record it and your asshole's going to be all over the internet. Not that I would mind that now, to be honest, there are worse things in the fucking world than my asshole. But, um, I, have decided and realized that someone gave me a good tip once that if you're ever taking your clothes off don't put your face in it you can never stop someone getting their phone out and filming the, the screen somewhere else that is always a risk you're gonna obviously have to take which is really fucking sad actually that people would ever do that but oh you can't i mean what can you do so every time i'm naked online which is always a last resort anyway because <laughs> i'm a lazy cab girl mm. um i always just start from the neck down no one sees my face while I'm naked. And if they ask that, I say, absolutely not. Like, why? You know, I know, I mean, you're getting enough. Is my vagina not enough? Do you know what <laughs> I mean? So that's probably the safest way to do it. In a strip club, obviously, there is no, no phone rule. If you get your phone out in a strip club, people literally duck dive you, tackle you to the floor and chuck the phone out the window. Like, it's that serious. People don't get phones out in strip clubs. So that's also quite cool. What do you like to do in your free time? What are your hobbies? That's a very difficult one because I go for a walk around the block a day at the moment because nothing is fucking open. So other than that, I like buying sex toys right now, even though, I mean, to be fair, I do live with a guy. So I'm, I luckily have a penis on hand, which I can use, which is really useful. I'm really like a lot of, you know, people out there who are single living in COVID. Toys are a great thing to keep yourself occupied. Obviously podcasting, I listen to loads of podcasts and i love cats i'm a cat lady always going to be a cat lady i just video my cat i mean this is the wrong time to be asking me these things if you were going to ask me this two years ago i'd be like ah babe i go horse riding i do all these things i go running i have loads of things to do i gotta hang out with my friends i haven't seen friends in months so right now it is it is definitely ruining my bank balance ordering dildos online is like becoming my new my new fetish my new thing yeah what is the proper etiquette for tipping i guess this goes for any avenue of work i guess in stripping is there tipping etiquette for touching you i know you said the one meter rule and like do people tip on cam or is it like a straight fee or rate i think in the strip club it's a lot easier to just say are you going to tip me because that's like basically what, what you want to ask it just be really blunt about it like tip me now and usually they can't say no because it's face to face and if you're working in the right strip clubs like the more upper upper end strip clubs back in the day that would be really easy so there isn't really an etiquette there just ask for it because actually that these people are in your house at the end of the day they come to see you so that's cool and online it's a little bit more difficult so i mean you can only tip up to 10 pounds at a time which is really measly so if you're in a group of people online in a group on camera, if, if they want you to take your clothes off quicker, you say, well, tip me then. And so you'll see all these people going, oh, right, if you just like do this quicker, or if you take off your bra quicker, we'll tip you. And then before you know it, sometimes you get tips, but it's not really the done thing on cam because obviously they're paying like five pounds a minute anyway, just for you to sit there and like really slowly type your name which is what i do over and over so it's very difficult for them, for them to tip i think yes tips are good i miss cash tips in the real world 
uh, yes, back in the day. How do we safely find you? If someone is listening and they're like, oh, she sounds so amazing. Like she's fun, she's cool. I like wanna watch or pay her. How do we find you? On Adult Work, that's the site I work on. There are like millions of girls, but I will be on there, find me. My first name, <laughs> my name starts with ballerina. And there's a few ballerines on there. I'll let you find me. That's like, that'll be like a little sneaky thing for you to find, but safely find me. Just type in ballerina and adult work and I will pop right up. Cool. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on. This is really awesome. You're a delight. And other than adult work, where can people find you? What are your socials? How do they listen to the podcast? Where do they find all that? Yeah, so we're basically anywhere that you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify. We're podcasts at stripperstories.com. We have a website as well. We're on YouTube and we're Stripper Stories Podcast on Instagram. So yeah, check us out. Thank you very much for having me. All right, we're done. That was lovely. Ah, amazing. Thank you so much. Sorry, I like waffle a lot. I don't even know what that means. I, I talk a lot. Waffle. Oh. <laughs> As in like... Thanks for listening. Share this link far and wide. Leave five-star reviews and follow me on Instagram at Positively Positive Podcast. Check out the website PositivelyPositivePodcast.com for reliable HSV resources and options to support the podcast or say thanks. Buy me a coffee, join the Patreon, or get yourself a Positively Positive sticker. If you just want to say hi, email me at PositivelyPositivePodcast at gmail.com or leave me a voicemail on Anchor. I'm out here, okay? It will always be me reading all your messages. You are not alone. I'm living positively positive, and you can too. Thank you.